One day, he woke up and looked out, and he found footsteps starting from the forest and leading right up to his back door. There were fresh footprints and only one set, which indicated that someone came out of the forest and walked to the house. That meant someone came to the door but didn't leave because there wasn't any returning tracks. They lived in a secluded house surrounded by forest. The nearest town was miles away and he only had one neighbor which he knew very well. So he walked the perimeter of the home to see if anyone exited from another door or window. After circling back round, he concluded there must be someone in the house. Hello horror fans, today I'll be telling you what happened to six people, the Gruber family, who were all killed mysteriously by an unknown presence. This happened in a time when there wasn't CCTV or forensics, but years later the case was reopened in 2007 and the police still couldn't solve the case. Whatever killed the Gruber family lived with them months before and then continued to stay with them after their deaths. Today's video is about the Hinterkaifeck murders. What happened to this family was so horrible and so chilling, to me it's one of the most mysterious cases ever. So if you love horror and all the things that go bump in the night, that's what I do. So stab the like button in the back, then subscribe and turn on all post notifications so you'll get a message when I upload. Whether this case was paranormal or not, that's for you to decide. But the facts of the case are so horrible and what happened to this poor family in the 1920s Everything I'm about to tell you is 100% fact. This is a true story. Someone or something shows up on the Gruber farm and it doesn't leave. The maid starts hearing noises and bangs at night. Things start to move around or go missing in the home. So they start looking for this thing who's invaded their home. Up until that point, everything pointed to someone or something having invaded the farm. They thought someone has snuck in and is terrorizing them. Then on March the 31st, 1921, for whatever reason, this thing decided to attack. Back in the 1920s, there was a farmstead called the Hinterkaifacht farm that was located in the southern part of Germany, in a very rural and isolated, heavily forested area. So the occupants of the farm were the living maid and the Gruber family. The father was called Andreas, his wife was called Gazilla. They had one daughter called Victoria and Victoria had two children, Yusuf who was only two years old and her daughter who she named Gazilla after her mother who was seven. The living maid was called Maria. Everything was going well for the Gruber family and their farm until the winter of 1921 when a lot of very strange things started happening on the farm. The first one to notice the strange things happening on the property was the living maid. She spent the majority of her time in the main house and was alone a lot of the time. She noticed when she was alone she'd hear tappings that sounded like it was coming from inside the walls. I'm not talking about someone tapping in another room. She heard tapping from inside the walls. She would literally walk up to the wall and put her ear to it and listen. And she could still hear, but she couldn't make sense of it. Then she started hearing a combination of voices and footsteps from the attic, which was right above her room. When the voices and footsteps started, she ran and told Andreas, look, there's someone in the attic. Andreas was a skeptic and he didn't believe in the supernatural and he thought that the maid just imagined it. Not only did he check the attic, uh, but the attic was a big wide open space and there was nowhere anyone could hide without being seen. There was no one up there and 
Also, there was no sign of anyone being there. There was no food, there was no rubbish, there was just no presence of anyone actually ever being there. So, over the course of several weeks, the living maid kept on hearing these strange noises. And at night time, she'd be lying in bed and she'd hear footsteps and disembodied voices coming from the attic and tappings from the walls. Many, many times she got so scared she'd tell Andreas and even though he got very angry, very frustrated with the maid, uh, Maria, he would always, even though he, was, he didn't believe her, he would always check the attic. And even though he, he never believed her, he still didn't want to risk it. So he would run up there, check the attic and there would be n no one there. So as time goes on, this was getting to the maid. She wasn't sleeping. And on top of that, she was very tired and she was very paranoid. Also, Andreas was getting woken up uh, most nights and he was getting angry too and he wasn't getting any sleep. The maid had worked with the Gruber family for years and years and uh, she loved them, but she was not convinced that the house was safe and she thought there was actually someone, a presence in the house. She thought the house was haunted. So one night, finally, after all these weeks and weeks of these noises these arguments not getting sleep of her annoying the family uh, annoying her her employer um, she finally just tells the family I I'm sorry but I can't stay here another night whenever I'm alone I feel like I'm being watched at night I can't sleep because of the footsteps from the attic I know you've checked but I can't be here anymore I, I believe your house is haunted so she got up and left the Gruber family. So that was it. The maid quit, which really took the Gruber family by surprise because they relied on Maria heavily. They relied on her help. So they, they don't know what to do here because running a farm is, is very, very hard. It takes a lot of work. And Maria was, she was doing the cooking and the cleaning and helping the kids side of it, like with their schoolwork, the, the ironing, the clothes, the washing. The, the, the Gruber family were running the farm, but Maria was running, in essence, the house. So she was doing like half the work. Like the family would come home from a hard day's work and there'd be a ready cooked meal on the table. Uh, so she upped and left. So she left and over the following six months, the family couldn't find a replacement. They could not find someone like Maria, which because she left increased the increase in workload for everybody on the farm which in turn everyone had a higher stress level this had a knock-on effect and everyone was tired everyone was frust more frustrated everyone had a higher stress stress level the departure of the living maid was a big deal and it hit them hard so you you gotta put that in perspective as you hear what happens over the next six months so after the maid left, at first, no one reported any strange noises or footsteps after she left. And that later was put down to everyone's workload being increased. So the family was so tired because they had this extra workload that the maid was doing. But and so now, because she had left, they had extra workload. So they had the farm workload as well as the household and the other the things to take care of. So the family was very tired. They didn't have time to listen for any noises. When they'd hit the bed, literally they would just go to sleep. Um, they were shattered literally from the long days and the early rises. But later, Andreas admitted he started hearing noises. He started hearing footsteps from the attic and tapping from the walls, but he found no one else apart from the family. So he starts to get paranoid and he tells the family about the noises. So he shares his paranoia with the family. And now everyone, one by one, start to hear the same noises, the tappings on the wall, coming from inside the wall, the footsteps at night from the attic, the disembodied voices that would just be like literally everywhere. Um, so one by one, they all started hearing these noises. The family would check the whole farm and the surrounding area, and they even did a full-blown sweep, but still nothing, no one. 
So now everyone's stressed out. They don't know where these noises are coming from. They're scared. They don't feel safe in their own home. They're tired. They don't have a maid. They're not getting any sleep. And because of this, the farm starts to suffer. And in turn, it gets in a state of disrepair, which because of that, they later in the story hire a repairman who you will find out what happens in shortly. So they they try to continue they just you know they, they put it to the back of their minds and they've got a farm to run they've got animals they've got a lively livelihood to 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 they've got responsibilities so they just try to like just carry on but the activity in the farm intensifies what started as tappings and footsteps and disembodied voices then turned into things going missing from the house or moving most noticeably was a set of house keys. There's only a certain amount of number of people living in the house and none of them have any reason to, to move house keys or to take them. So there was no conclusion as to where the house keys went. Now put yourself in their shoes. The maid has left who's lived with them for years. She's like part of the family. So the maid's left because of tappings and footsteps and noises coming from the house which now everyone's hearing things are getting moved everyone's tired and angry the general feel in the home is something is with them they can feel it the, the, they're very scared and they're living in fear from day to day and they they honestly think their house is haunted so then on top of all of that then they lose a set of house keys whatever this thing was it was gradually wearing the group of family down and for all intents and purposes it was working so around about that time after the keys went missing everyone now was terrified they were all at their wits end they felt like the house was haunted then one night the young girl Kazilla, who was only seven at the time just went missing the family went into a full-blown panic they went all over the house and the surrounding barns looking for her. They even went into the forest. They were screaming her name. They were, they were trying to find out where she had gone to. There was no signs, no footsteps, no footprints, no signs. Her, her clothes were there. She had just disappeared. So finally, after hours of looking, they found her shivering in the forest. So they grab her, they take her inside. They, they ask her like, what happened? Like, how did you, what, what are you doing? So the little girl, she's confused. She doesn't know how she got there. She has no memory of why she was in the forest or how she got there. She can't remember anything. She was only wearing her night clothes. So she was absolutely freezing. So they finally managed to calm her down. They bring her inside, they've warmed her up. They've locked the doors and they're about to go back to bed. Then they look up and they, Andreas notices something's out of place. Lying on his table is a newspaper. So he opens the newspaper up and he realizes it's not his or the family. It don't belong to none of them. And also none of them even subscribe to this newspaper. And it was later found through investigation afterwards that the newspaper wasn't even published and sold in that area. But here it was, just lying on their table. A couple of days later, they noticed someone had tried to break into their tool shed, which had a lot of big, heavy farm tools that were very expensive. So there was a big padlock on the outside of the tool shed. And one day, Andreas went, was going in there and he found that someone clearly had been bashing the lock it had it clearly had deep gouges and scratch marks on the, the lock almost like as if someone had been hacking away at it with either a hammer or a, a, a axe trying to break open the lock now that was very strange because they they live in a very isolated part of germany there isn't any ambient sounds there's no cars or towns or trucks or or crowds of people because it's a forested area so they they find it strange that even though someone had clearly been hitting this metal lock with something which was clearly metal and heavy, that no one heard any noises. 
no one reacted to any of the like metal on metal bangs not even the farm dogs that lived on the farm so very strange things were still happening but it would be what Andreas sees in the spring of 1921 that finally pushes Andreas and his family over the edge from general paranoia to actual outright panic. So one day Andreas wakes up early in March 1921. There's been a big snowstorm the previous night. So he goes outside with his coffee and he opens the back door just to take a look at the, the outside. He opens the door, he looks down and he clearly sees footprints. A set of tracks that have walked from the forest, which is quite a ways away. Even though the farm is surrounded by a forest, they still have a bit of acreage. So he's looking at these tracks which have come from the forest right up to his back door where he's just standing right now. So he can clearly see footsteps walking out from the forest right up to his back door that he's just opened now he's just standing there looking at these footprints leading up to his house but he notices there isn't any returning tracks only one set leading from the forest to the door so he's now thinking whoever's footprints these are they came into my house because that's what it's it's indicating so he immediately shuts and locks the door and he wakes up his family and he asks everyone why is there footprints coming to the back door because whoever's tracks they are they came into the house so the wife the daughter and the grandkids none of them know anything about it they haven't seen these tracks they've literally just been woken up they haven't got any clue they've all been asleep and clearly are just as confused as andreas is so now andreas is very frightened everything strange and scary that's been happening over the last few months is fresh in his head and now he opens his door and this. So he goes downstairs to take another look, but he just doesn't get it. To walk up to the house, you either have to be in the house and obviously there wasn't anyone else in the house. So that means you would have to turn back and go back, but there was no other tracks. So he, he doesn't understand what's going on. So he goes into the house, he checks the house, he checks the attic, he checks everywhere but there was no one so he, he shuts the door and he does an outside sweep of the perimeter check if anyone's left through a window or another door so he's looking for exiting tracks which would have meant someone came into the house and left either through a window or another door which is scary enough but at least that would have made sense so He's now convinced someone is hiding in his property or on the farm. So he, clo he does a full scan. He checks the bedrooms. He checks the attic. He goes absolutely everywhere. He's yelling. He's like screaming. He's looking everywhere. But nothing. No one was in the house or the farm. These tracks have just appeared magically from the forest to his door. And there's no one else on the farm. Just picture that in your head. So the whole family is now concerned even more, but there's no one in the house. So he locks up, he puts on his coat and his hat, his gloves and scarf and whatnot. And he goes out to follow these tracks, these footprints, to find out where they came from. So he walks all the way back to the forest following these footprints. But the tracks just stop all of a sudden from nowhere. They just stop. It's like it magically started by the tree line and they walked up to his house and then that's it there was no point of origin where the track started from they just appeared from the, the tree line and ended at his house so this throws him for a loop he doesn't know what's going on so he does another sweep after all of that he finally decides to tell someone else what's been happening over the past few months. So he did have a neighbor by the name of Lorenz Schlittenbauer. So Lorenz was his closest neighbor, but by our standards today, it wasn't close. Uh, it was over 200 yards away from the Hinterkaifeck farm. So he goes over to his neighbor Lorenz and he tells him everything. 
He tells him about the sounds, the tappings from inside the walls, the footsteps, the disembodied voices, how his maid quit because she thought the house was haunted and how the keys just gone went missing and this newspaper that no one subscribed to that mysteriously appeared on the table and how his granddaughter had just vanished and was found hours later in the forest and right up to the incident with the footprints that day that led from the forest to his door so Lorenz doesn't know what to make of it he listens to everything Andreas says and he suggests that uh, Andreas take a spare rifle and arm himself like he says I've got a spare gun I've got a spare ammunition uh, like do you want to take a gun and you know like arm yourself but for whatever reason Andreas refuses and he doesn't take the gun which turns out to be a very big mistake if it was me I would have taken that gun uh, I mean I would have even asked Lorenz to stay with him if he could <clears throat> um, but that you know that's hindsight so for whatever reason he didn't take the gun and that turned out to be a very big mistake he should have taken up Lorenz's offer on the spare gun so after a few days after speaking to the neighbor the Gruber family got some good news finally something good happened for them so they were finally able to hire another maid to replace the one Maria who had quit so the new maid was going to come stay with them uh, and live on the farm and help because she was replacing remember she was placing Maria who had left because she thought the house was haunted so a few weeks later and the new maid turns up to the Hinterkaifeck farm and everyone's happy at last they get extra help there's uh, another person to help with the chores and the, the, the cooking and the cleaning so Andreas can get some downtime and even the maid's happy she's moving in she, she likes the new family she's got a roof over her head and a, and a job a steady job which was very hard to come by so everything was good and everyone was happy but it turned out unfortunately this would be also be the same day a horrible tragedy was going to unfold at the Hinterkaifeck farm so over the course of 24 hours someone or something was in the barn on the Hinterkaifeck farm and it was able to silently kill all the members of the Gruber family one by one it turned out that they had individually one by one taken in turns to go into the barn like they were in a trance saw the same thing that happened to Andreas's granddaughter she was found in the forest she had no memory it's like she was in a trance well the same thing happened one by one the the members of the family over the course of 24 hours walked into the barn where they were struck in the back of the head very heavily with something called a mattock uh, a mattock is a very old farm tool it's like an axe crossed with a hammer which was later uh, after the investigation and after the death the farm was torn down and that's when they found this weapon so the investigators concluded that by the footprints they had walked into the barn one by one where the head was smashed in by someone or something so four days later on April the 4th the family's repairman was on site he was on the properties because he was uh, it was scheduled that he was to do some repairs so he came to repair the feeding machine they, were, they had this big feeding machine and uh, he came to repair that so he knocks on the door but there's no answer so he later told the investiga investigators the lights were on he could hear the dogs were barking on the inside also he saw smoke coming out of the chimney so he knew where the feeding machine was and from the main house it was easy to get to the feeding machine and it was right in front of the family could see him basically he wasn't trespassing they knew he was due so he figured you know I've looked in the windows he saw the lights he saw the smoke coming from the chimney so he figured he'd fix the feeder and then he thought where uh, he was working the family would come out and greet him 
uh, during his uh, repairs. So anyway, some time later, he finishes the repairs, and then all of a sudden he sees a dog that was on the inside, which is now on the outside. Because he looked in before and he noticed there were dogs running around. The dog was running on the inside, but now <clears throat> this dog is on the outside, around the side of the house, because he heard it barking. So, so that so he goes over to that part of the farm. He knocks on the door yet again, but there's no one answering the door. So he's knocking on the back door, but he thinks someone must have just come out to put the dog there. Because remember that dog was on the inside, but now it, someone's come out tied the dog up and gone back in but there's no one around so he's knocking on the door he's calling uh, and so later he tells investigators he goes over to Lorenz Schlittenbauer's house the neighbor he tells the neighbor hey look I was just over at the Hinterkaifeck farm fixing the feeder just like they asked me to but no one's there and then something strange happened one minute the dog was inside then someone let the dog out no one answered the door the lights were on there's smoke coming out the chimney he can hear noises like what's going on do you have you seen them and also can you just let him know i was there i fixed the feeder and i'll come back for my my uh, my fee so the repairman goes off so this prompts lorenz the neighbor to go check on his friend because it's been a few days now he hasn't seen or heard uh, from Andreas and he knows about all the strange activity that's been taking place uh, at the farm so he figures you just go check if everything's okay it's uh, just next door so he figures you go and check on the Hinterkaifeck farm so sure enough he gets there and the dogs are tied up on the outside the lights are on there's smoke coming out the chimney and for all intents and purposes it looks like someone's in uh, so he's knocking on the door knocking on the door but no one's answering. So then he looks over and he sees the barn, the big barn, because there's a big barn and a small barn. So the big barn is fully open, which is strange because there's animals in there and the barn door should always be closed. So he thinks someone's in the barn, but the lights are off, it's pitch black. Now, with everything that's been going on, me personally, I would not enter in that barn, but Lorenz had a gun. He had a rifle, he was fully loaded, he went into the barn gun aimed ready so he's in the barn now lights are off pitch black and he walks in so Lorenz goes over walks into the barn at first he doesn't see anything because remember it's pitch black and his eyes needed time to adjust but inevitably he's looking around with the gun and he sees a foot sticking out of the hay so inevitably he finds the bodies of his friend and his uh, the whole family so now Lorenz now he has his gun and he goes to the house he basically kicks in the door uh, and he's got his gun trained but the house is empty he sweeps into every room he makes sure there's no one he knows everything that's been going on so he's very careful he checks there's no one in the house and he, fi it, he finds the house completely empty, but he tells investigators later during the examination, there was evidence of someone being present. The lights were on, the fire was even lit. The dogs were put outside, also the dogs had been fed. Someone was also eating food in the house. There was evidence that someone had been eating that very day. The farm was being lived in at that very moment. But to Lorenz and to anyone else, it looked as if though, as if someone had just been in that property. So the police turn up and they're able to determine with relative certainty that the murders took place on the 31st of March, uh, 1921. But for four days afterwards, someone or something lived in the Gruber house, slept in their beds, ate their food, lit the fires and played and fed their dogs they for all intents and purposes lived in the house for four days after killing the whole family so this was the outcome so someone had invaded the property six months before the family was killed then for whatever reason 
decided on March the 31st to kill the entire family. Then they stayed on a further four days until the 4th of April 921. At first the police thought it was a drifter who found this farm that was hidden and the, the drifter probably thought this is a good target opportunity but when the farm was checked large sums of money for that time was found all over the house there was cash on the table in the bedroom uh, in the drawers and also Andreas's jacket that he was uh, murdered in there, there was cash in his pocket so it didn't make any sense because if it was a drifter that did this why didn't the drifter take the cash so if it wasn't a robbery maybe it was a crime of passion but what's the motive and unfortunately it was uh found that Andreas was not very well liked in the town uh, that was a few miles away so there was lots of people it could have been which made it very hard to narrow it down so <clears throat> they interviewed hundreds of people who could have been connected with the case and they were getting nowhere fast uh, then they, they felt it could have been Lorenz Schlittenbauer because he was the nearest neighbour also it was known that Lorenz wanted to marry Victoria, Andreas' daughter, but Andreas had flatly refused. So they thought that this could be the reason why. But the problem with Lorenz being the primary suspect was he had an alibi and he also had his own farm to keep and he had relatives that lived with him. So how could he commit this crime and the time it took and then also live in the Hinterkaifach farm for four days and sleep and eat and live there and also run his, his own farm without his family knowing. When his family were questioned, they were like, no, look, it's not him. He's been with us the whole time. So the police were stumped. They didn't have any leads and they couldn't solve this. So all they knew was whoever did this lived on or around the farm up for up to six months before they committed this crime. Then they stayed on the farm for four more days. Then they vanished. That, that they knew definitely happened. And to this day, that person has not been caught. They even reopened the case in 2007. But the authorities found that despite the number of suspects and despite the evidence available, it wasn't enough to come up to any solid conclusion as to what happened. And to this day, it remains as this high profile mystery. And just like any other mystery, there's hundreds of expl explanations as to what could have happened. But what I'm most interested in is what you guys think. Have you ever heard of the Hinterkaifak murders? Are there any people from Germany who might have grown up hearing about this story, about uh, this true story, what happened? Do, do, do you think it's paranormal? Or do you think it was a drifter? Do you think it could have been the neighbor? Or do you think it was just someone that hated Andreas? Please let me know in the comments and I will respond to you all. And let me know what you think happened at the Hinterkaifak farm. If you have any tales or stories or videos, or if there's a case you want me to research, you can comment me at the bottom or you can email me personally. My email should be on the screen now. And if you haven't already, please stab that like button in the back, then subscribe and turn on all post notifications. So you will get more content just like this. Uh, also, I do videos on ghosts, poltergeists and demons. I also have a thing for creepy pastors. So check out the playlists. They're already made and they're just waiting there for you. And from time to time, I also mess around on my PlayStation. So if I'm not uh, reading about ghosts, I'm talking about them. And if I'm not doing that, then I'm killing them again. Because, you know, ghosts are already dead. Unless they're zombies, but that's a whole nother video. Okay, guys, so that's going to do it for now. I hope you like the video. And as always, peace.